All right, and they can come over here. That's totally fine. Uh, okay. Juju! Juju! Come. That's Juju, or top of Juju's head. This is uh, Juju and Ed's roadmap to success. So uh, basically, both these dogs are, are kind of a little bit insecure, a little bit fearful. Uh, Ed was uh, adopted as a, a, a surrender, and so he's probably had some issues, uh, some confidence issues and socialization issues. Um, she has some issues. I think a lot of her issues were, I think that uh, for Juju, people weren't listening to her when she was communicating, which is why the video we did above is about consent. Um, it's kind of funny because I just did the video, the dog bed's right here, and I was even telling uh, well, one of the guardians to touch her on her side, and the other guardian's like, but she's on the dog bed. So it, it's going to be, uh, come up with a watchword for these things. The watchwords I like to use, uh, come up with a watchword that means to go to the dog bed, like Colorado, if you like. Um, another word that means you're about to interact with the dog or you're interacting with the dog in the safe place. Stop doing that. Um, celebrate is means that you're missing an opportunity to reward the dog for a desired action or behavior that you want, which we'll talk about in a minute. And then paycheck means I suspect you're petting the dog for uh, absentmindedly and not for a reason. We're going to talk about all these. So uh, first thing we talked about was uh, exercise and structure. Right now the dogs are getting a walk at about five o'clock in the evening. So all day long, they're journeying up this energy. Now, Ed has blown out his essentially dog version of his ACL. And uh, so he's got some pain. We tried to lure him up this ramp. Up, there's some steps right here off camera you can't see. And he couldn't do it. He didn't want to do it. It's probably painful for him. So I think getting a sloped ramp will help him. And I would like to get one for these for any area that he's going to jump up because the more that he jumps down, the more he's going to injure that thing. And eventually he might get to the point where you get a breaking point um, and it probably is going to slow down his rehabilitative process. So the more that he can use that ramp, the way I like to do, have you do the ramp and with Juju away, put a dotted line of treats up there and make you make sure you're using the high value treats, either the chicken liver or the beef liver and put those up there and let him go up and get them. You know, don't try to force him and don't try to, you know, just make him available. And if he only goes a little bit up, Put a couple more. Now keep in mind that the angle of the ramp is also going to determine how much pain it is on his back. So you might have to get a little bit of a longer one. Um, uh, check out uh, five elements and see if you can see Dr. Jack or somebody who can do some chiropractic work or maybe some acupressure or acupuncture. Um, and they can also look at his anatomy and to give you a second opinion. But again, Sirius is uh, really the ex uh, experts. And so if you guys can swing it, whatever we want to do, we want to just start some sort of rehabilitation plan, whether it's either uh, exercises or stretches or uh, you know, regular chiropractic or t tank work or whatever it is, we need to take that pain away because that's going to affect a lot of his, a lot of his problems, I think, are affiliated with that. So um, we talked about um, the importance of exercise. A lot of people don't realize that for dogs, sniffing burns more energy than walking. On a walk right now, she is all over the place. She doesn't sniff and she's just darting around. And I think because she's the more boisterous dog, it's very common for people when the dog does that, we jerk the leash or we pull the dog back, they have an opposition reflex. The more we pull, the more that they're gonna pull against us. And so we're really training the dog to pull. And a lot of people inadvertently do this for years. I think that's probably what's been going on here. So um, because she doesn't sniff, what I like the guardians do, provide that she's not lactose intolerant is either get some of the freeze-dried beef liver you can use the uh, chicken liver as well but I like using shredded cheese just finely shredded cheese and so basically what I do is I put the uh, go ahead of the walk and again walk for duration don't walk and complete a circuit just walk ahead of the direction you're gonna go on this side of the sidewalk put a little trail of cheese then uh, and then a couple of paces later do another one and at first it might have to be a trail of cheese and then right on the other side of the street where it ends a trail of cheese uh, but in the grass and uh, it's going to be harder when it snows. When it snows, you might have to get the, uh, the something else or look for snow makes it harder. Uh, but it's Nebraska. It's been pretty temperate. I think it's going to snow this weekend, but who knows it will stay. But so try to get do this the next couple of days because uh, I think tomorrow night is when it's supposed to snow. You guys are probably going to see us. There's probably already snow on the ground. But the idea is if you can, sprinkle those cheese. And so she's going over there and sniffing, and we're letting her sniff and lick up that cheese. She's also sniffing. After a while, hopefully she's looking on the ground for more cheese. But after you get it on this side, lead her to the next one, then lead her to the next one. And you might only go one or two houses. That's okay. All we want her to do is learn to sniff. It's relaxing. It burns energy. It increases confidence. Um, it's really a, a multiple beneficials, multiple, multiple benefits. Um, and so uh, we're using a, a harness. We always want to use Y shape or X shape harness. You don't want to use a harness that's a T that can impact their uh, their mobility. Um, so the harness, uh, that's great. Uh, she likes to play fetch. Playing fetch with her is great. Uh, that's a nice way to get her to do it. Um, but I would actually add a pre to that. When she brings you back the ball, she drops it. She doesn't drop it. So when she brings it, so what I would do is to teach her how to drop it, 
You're not gonna do this on camera. So when she has something in her mouth, pull out a treat and go over and hold it here. And as soon as she drops it, say, good, pop the treat in her mouth. And don't pick the object up or wait a period of time. If she doesn't grab it right away, go ahead and grab it, tease her a little bit. She grabs it, hold the object, good. And so the instant she opens her mouth, you say, good, and you put it in there. When you can reliably predict the behavior, then you can go, drop, and then you give her the treat and you would drop saying the good. Uh, but teaching a dog to drop is really important for fetch. And also important to understand that when dogs bring us stuff, they don't always want us to have their stuff. We always think that we're, we want it, we gotta try to take it from them. It's kind of like when we turn 40 or whenever we go buy a sports car, we don't we want to show off to our neighbors. We don't want our neighbors to drive the car. Kind of the same sort of thing for dogs at some point. So eventually she'll come over and drop the ball for you. When that's the case, um, then you, when you can play fetch, when she drops the ball, pick it up and tell her to sit. When she sits, then throw the ball. So you're adding a little bit of that pre-mac to the situation. Um, uh, she needs exercise more than Ed does. Ed needs more stimulation. She needs exercise and stimulation. Ed can get a walk too, but because of his back legs, we want to kind of be ginger. I would, uh, again, I would ask Sirius and uh, Five Elements how long a walk it should be. Maybe 20 minutes is too long for him. Maybe it should be five minutes. Um, also getting a uh, Omega Paw treat ball, getting some puzzle games, Googling scent games, um, just hiding treats around, um, uh, getting snuffle mats and having them feed. Uh, right now they're free fed. I like the guardians to switch over to feeding them. Now, when you put them in the snuffle mat, you might have grab uh, some of the uh, kibble or some of the uh, freeze dried beef liver or the chicken liver at first and mix it in with the kibble to get them doing it. Um, but this way it makes uh, feeding almost like a walk. So if we can feed them with a snuffle mat in the morning and then feed them in the evening, make sure that they get uh, they don't get exercised until about 90 minutes after they eat because they have a distended stomach. It can actually move around. It can be fatal. So after 90 minutes, it's passed through the belly. Um, and so basically, I'd like them to get exercise or stimulation about every two to three hours. And if we're going to have people come over or something's going to happen, you know the dog's going to get worked up, getting them exercise ahead of time sets them up for success. And kind of play around with it. Maybe try 15 fetches and then have a guest come over. Okay, that didn't, that was maybe a C minus. Okay, next time we do 25 fetches and then have a guest come over. Just make sure she has 10 minutes of rest after the exercise before this next thing happens. Um, and if you can, have them meet people outside and go for a walk together. That way there's a lot of distractions the, and then uh, inside there's only like one or two exits, so that makes them automatically a little bit confined. And when guests come over, they should ignore the dogs completely. What I'd like the guests to do is, I'd like you guys to get, this is a mini treat pouch from PetSafe. You can get the large one, but, or a small one, but it's huge. So get one of these and load it up with the treats. When guests come over, get it to them. They can attach it to their belt or their whatever it is. And what I did was I just pulled out, I was using the Charlie Bears, and I was throwing a treat. All I wanted the dog to do is, and at first you probably will actually have to throw the treat behind the dog if the dog's growling, get the dog moving away. And after a while, then you can get uh, out to the side, this side behind and a little bit in front. And you wanna to try to get the dog coming closer and closer to you, but the guest should not try to pet the dog, look at the dog, interact with the dog. We want the, get, we want, uh, uh, we want the dog to feel very comfortable and confident because the person's not trying to initiate with them. They're the ones approaching the people. Now I showed you guys the targeting, uh, touch targeting game. And so uh, you're gonna be, uh, Gwen's gonna be doing the most of it. But when you have guests come over, it, once they get warmed up with you, you could do it like five or six times and have the guests sitting right next to you and then have the guests do it. A lot of times the dog will just go straight towards it. Um, now, if Laura comes back, Laura likes using a touch stick and that might be something used for a guest. A touch stick is kind of a long stick that has like a ball at the end of it. So that way we can hold it off to the side and the dog doesn't have to get as close to the person. But the more the dogs engage with the people and they're the ones initiating the contact, the more confident they're gonna feel. Uh, she, Juju is wiped out because this, we've been making use her brain. That's the benefit of using that exercise and the stimulation. So also get yourself a uh, snuffle mat, a couple of them. I like getting them from Best Buddy uh, Dog Company. They're actually doing a sale right now. They have the ones that have, uh, get the ones with suction. Well, they're Jack Russell's. If they start moving around, you can get the ones with little, they look like uh, octopus suction things and they stick to anything. You put them against the wall. Um, you can put them against a dry, uh, washing machine or drywall, uh, not drywall, but uh, smear peanut butter on it. If they don't like just the peanut butter, crump, crumple up the, some of the Stewart Street Drive beef liver and put it in there and eventually start freezing those. So when guests come over, the guests should have those treats and be throwing those treats. When the dogs stop growling, um, give, them the, give them the lick mats, give them the, uh, the bully sticks, the bully sticks you can get from the green spot. Make sure the bully sticks you get are odor free. Um, they're more expensive, but your nose will thank you. Um, don't, and make sure that you're not getting uh, uh, bully sticks that have uh, uh, rawhide wrapped around them. If you go to those good stores, you're gonna get good stuff. So every time a guest comes over, we get exercise first, we go for a little bit of a walk with the guest and the guest are maybe dropping some treats, then they come inside and the guests throw treats around. And get, we don't want the dog to just sit and stare. 
We want the dog to move around, even if we throw the treats behind the dog to get the dog to move away. And after a while, then the dog get closer and closer, but tell the guests, don't try to pet. When the dog comes over and sniffs you, hold still. Don't pet them. That, that gives the dogs more confidence and they feel comfortable. And eventually when the guests, if they do feel comfortable, you can do a little bit of the, the boop or the touch or whatever you call that exercise. And once they practice enough with you, then they're gonna be, feel comfortable doing that with other people as well. Um, and then you might wanna get a couple of lick mats and keep a couple of them in the freezer ready with frozen with peanut butter. That way they take a little bit longer. Um, also look for other treat dispensing toys. Uh, I like the Omega Paw Treat Ball, but there's a whole bunch of different ones on Amazon and Chewy. And you might want to Google it. There's a lot of DIY ones that you can do as well. Um, let me see. Uh, what else do we talk about? Um, uh, maintenance. Covering up the bottom a pane of the windows here because the dogs cannot get on the couch so they can see outside. Um, and also for, uh, before I forget, for Ed, when he's getting down the couch, if you look, if you tr know he's going to get down, try to put the trail of treats or take a treat and lure him. Now, when you're luring, you want to keep that treat within an inch of the dog's nose at all times. So I have one of the guardians, I'm like, uh, touch the nose, go to the floor, and went like that. That, the dog's gonna lose interest. So go like this, the dog stops tracking, go back to the nose. And eventually you can lure him down to whatever it is. So I would like you guys to practice with the ramp, having him go up and down it like five times up and five times down. And after a while, he'll get in the habit. He'll just run over and go up and down. He'll probably uh, recognize that it doesn't hurt his joints as much, but you'll have to kind of practice having it go up and down. Like I said, at first put the trail of treats and then try to lure him up after he gets pretty comfortable uh, up and down. And you might even come up with a word, you know, what, uh, going up, you know, lobby or whatever it is. So you say lobby and he runs down here. So again, you mark it or not, well, you wouldn't mark it, use the cues that I showed you. So as soon as he gets the, so he's right up here, you drop one to the bottom of the stairs, he runs down there. As soon as he first takes his first step, you say going down and then he cuts down and he licks up the treat. So now you've created a command word. He should have that slope for any elevated position that he's gonna get onto, any beds, any couches in the other uh, guardian's house. So that way he doesn't, uh, doesn't make his injury worse. Um, for the free feeding, uh, switching to the structure feeding, I gotta move my legs or I'm gonna go to sleep. Um, so basically they're probably not gonna wanna do it at first so that you can, you can put a little bit of freeze dried beef liver in there. Um, but when they move away from the snuffle mat, just pick it up. And then they don't get fed again until the next meal outside of treats for training. Uh, after a day or two, they, they become motivated, but the silver mat's pretty easy. They usually get into it. Now, I'd also like the guardians to get an X pen, uh, letter X, P, N. Um, it's short for exercise pen. For dogs, excuse me, anything that they're doing that we don't disagree with, we're saying kind of we're cool with that. So basically, when uh, Ed is being petted, Ju uh, Juju likes to come up and, and kind of lay on her belly and she tries to get some attention and he doesn't want that. And she sometimes doesn't want other people to pet her. So one of the things you can do is put her in the uh, X, -man, uh, X pen. Now, when you do that, make sure you get a bully stick, drill a hole through the back of it, put it to a dumbbell in the middle of it. And at first, just let her go in there with the door open and chew on it and then she can leave and she can come and go. So she's pretty much comfortable going in there. And you can make it really narrow, so it'd be right up here on your hardwood. Um, and then eventually you get to the point where she, she gets in there when she kind of just gets into it, you close the door and then let her continue doing it. And when she gets up and want to come out, you can unlatch the door and let her out. Don't make her protest in there. We want her to relax and be comfortable in there. And so after you've done that several times, she's nice and relaxed and laying down. You might have to put some carpet down because she probably won't want to lay down on the hardwood floor. Um, and then eventually, hey, sweetheart, she'll feel comfortable. And then we can put her in there and then we can practice petting Ed or doing these other things where she can't get to him. Uh, now uh, for her, uh, one other little thing I showed for the guardians for her is to get her to stop moving away, taking a treat like this and holding it here and just going like this. And when the treat's gone, stop. And I, was, I would use the, the, uh, the, the chicken liver ones because I can smash them like a pancake and it lasts longer. And eventually you can go like, and make sure she's, see how she's looking kind of, my hand is not, it's in her purview. And eventually I can touch her shoulder and if she stops like that, then that's, she's saying that, that was too much. So I just go back to the movement without making the contact. Always back up a step. And eventually you get to the point where you'll be able to touch her and she's gonna be comfortable with that. And uh, she actually sees it as a good thing. But again, if she turns her head, looks away, follow the stuff in the, uh, in the consent video above to make sure she is comfortable. Once she recognizes that you guys are listening, it's gonna be, she's gonna have a lot more confidence and she's not gonna really mind you guys touching her as much, especially if you touch and then she gets a treat immediately afterwards. You don't have to do that forever, just until she's comfortable. Um, let me see, what else? Uh, so um, you can also feed her out of the Omega Pot mm -hmm. treat balls. Feed her a kibble. Uh, a lot of people just put treats in there. You can do that, but uh, you can also put kibble in there. 
Um, let me see, what else? Uh, we also talked about uh, some rules. They shouldn't be allowed uh, within uh, seven feet of anybody who's eating. Now the video that's gonna be right, uh, right below this on my website is gonna be about two Dotsons, and it's about uh, how to train uh, dogs to go to a dog bed using positive reinforcement only is the title, I believe. Watch the video there and practice that, follow the steps there. That way the dogs practice staying outside the kitchen when you're eating food. Um, I would make sure that they're out of the kitchen when you put all the dishes in the dishwashers and then close it so they don't practice going in there. Guarding resources uh, it can be a problem. Um, and then uh, also uh, when you're eating shouldn't be within seven feet of you and when, shouldn't be in the kitchen when you're preparing food. They can go in the kitchen, just not when you're preparing food. Use those pre max so tell the dog to sit before you let him out the door. Uh, remember we talked about for, uh, for fetch, once we've taught her how to drop, then we just tell her she drops, pick it up and tell her to sit. When she sits, then I throw the ball. And uh, tell her to sit before you put the leash on. If she gets very excited for the leash, pick up the leash, go to every room in your house, tell her to sit, attach the leash, then give her a treat. Then take it off and go to the next room, tell her to sit, put the leash on. Try to do that about five or six times a day, uh, going through a whole bunch of rooms in the house. After a while, you just say, sit, grab the leash and just sit down. Then you put the leash on her. Now, one of the guardians uh, that uh, has been uh, bit by Juju, I showed her the hand targeting exercise. I also showed the, uh, the uh, elevator ride uh, is, I guess, what we called it. So make sure you're practicing that about three times a day with 12 treats each time. And now that I think about it, I probably would like you to practice those separate. And so make sure you practice in different parts of the house um, at different times of the day and also for different postures. Sometimes you're, you're sitting like this, sometimes you're on your knees, sometimes you're on your knees uh, upright, sometimes you're sitting on the, on the furniture. So she gets used to that dogs don't generalize well. Um, and if you do that three times a day uh, for both of those exercises, uh, you should be able to, again, remember the progression for the target is turn, then lean, then one step, then multiple steps. And eventually you can go like this, target or whatever your word is, and she runs over and sticks her nose there. And then, you know, and then you can pet her. Um, I'm trying to think, is there anything else we want to go over? Um, I think we, we covered it all. Now, uh, because the dogs are lower in self-esteem and confidence, we might need a follow-up session. Now, my session is more expensive because it's a three-hour session. Uh, but uh, if you want to set something up with Laura, Laura does three one-hour sessions for a little bit less money. And then she can come by and, and work on some, building up some confidence and some games and some other stuff, which I think would really be helpful. Um, they're great dogs. I don't think they're aggressive dogs at all. I just think that Ed's in pain and that's affected him. And I think Juju has just felt like nobody's listening to her. And so she's got to kind of correct her, uh, correct things herself. Now that you guys know how to read those things, I would anticipate things are going to get better. But if they don't, please let me know. If I don't hear from you, I assume everything's going great. If there's a problem, uh, I can't help you if you don't let me know. And I've got all these videos I can share. All right, Juju, let's sign off. Come here. Can you come up here? This is my buddy Juju, and these are some tip. Uh, this is uh, Juju and Ed's roadmap to success. Remember, everything you do trains your dog. Only sometimes you mean it. All right.